what's going on YouTube and welcome back to the channel. This is the second edition of 30 Minute Sessions, the session where I bring on other giant creators and other giant fans and also eventually we'll branch out into the NFL and bring on just fans of the sport. Um, today we got Nate Talk Sports and we got Logan's Giant Zone with us and how are you guys doing today? Not Introduce okay. yourselves and where can you guys find you? Nate, you can go first. All right. Hey guys, it's Nate. If you want me to rant every day, and if you want the Yankees, the Giants, and the Knicks to suck, just go to my channel and you can see me rant with Zion and Logan at the same time. It's entertaining. Um, Knicks streams, they're fun. I love my Knicks streams. John, I'll be doing a game this year. I don't know what game I'll do this year, but whatever. And then for the Yankees, whatever game is on this season, I'll probably do. So, Hell yeah. You guys can find me at Logan's Giants on. I make Giants and Knicks content. I like to rant. I like to curse. So uh, just be prepared. Don't let your children watch this shit. Um, you can also find me, Zion, and Nate all at We Connected. We do non-sports related content. So go check out both of those channels. And uh, let's get it. Let's get it. And I appreciate that plug for We Connected, Logan. Always a blast on that channel. Um, You can find all three channels. The links down below in the description. Also, if you guys didn't, we had streamed an epic stream yesterday. It got heated at times, but all in good fun and all in good love for the Giants. I you guys can go talk. check that out. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, it got really, really awesome. So you guys can go check that out if you guys didn't already. If you're new here, please subscribe and like the video if you if you like what you see. If you don't like it, it's fine. You can dislike it. It's okay. Well, don't getting tell into, them it's um, okay to dislike it's okay to, people can People can do what they want to. I don't want to just, if you really don't like something, I me personally, I don't dislike videos because that's just wrong. I, but, you know, if you really want to, you go right ahead. It, the choice is yours. Um, the thing is, we want a game, guys. We want a game. And we didn't even only win a game, like, we beat a team, okay? Clearly, people can say, oh, it's, it was 5-3 and three at the half. But we closed, and we closed strong. So my first question for you, the panel is, what do you guys take away from this game? What is the biggest takeaway from this game? Nate, Logan, whoever wants to answer it first. I'll let Nate go first. All right. So you want me to do the key, or do you want me just to – just to do it all in general, just a recap. You can you can recap it. You can add, uh, yeah, what is your biggest takeaway? There you go. Your biggest, the biggest takeaway. takeaway. Um, biggest takeaway was doubtfully the defense. The, they played say. hard. That was the pause, but they they played hard and they they played they played more aggressive. I've probably ever seen the defense do. And yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely to see a defense that actually can play defense. The, the I don't know what the hell happened to weeks one through seven. It was crazy shit. But we we stepped up when we needed to. The defense, the takeaways that we got. Dory Jackson actually knows how to fucking tackle. It took him five weeks, and then now now he's starting to tackle. So I don't know how you can do that, but shit, we will take we'll take someone he, he tackles someone, and then now now we have Renardrick McKenney, who I'm excited for as a Giants fan because I. Watch this dude at, te- at on the Texans. He's he's a linebacker. I think the Giants should use him a lot in in these in the run stopping because he's he's really good run stopper. So in the future, watch your name out for Bernard McKenney. He's going to be like a Blake Martinez type. So former Pro Bowl. Yeah, I like it. What's your biggest takeaway, Logan? Yeah, I'm going to say the defense as well, but not just that the defense played good. My biggest takeaway is that the defense actually play with some heart. They didn't just play good. When they made a good play, you could see that they were getting hyped. They weren't just like, okay, a robot time. I'm a good player. Because the first six weeks of the season, if the defense made a good play, they just go back to the huddle and they wouldn't really give a shit. But now, are we past the two-minute mark? Yes, we are. But now they're actually playing with some heart, and that's my biggest takeaway. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, and after you agree with you guys, my biggest takeaway from the defense, the heart, you know, they showed up tackling. They it was night and day from the defense that showed up week one through six. Um, it was more like the defense that showed up in the fourth quarter against the Saints. You know what I'm saying? And also too, there was a defense that we had some key injuries on, and the players that took over did a good job. So I'm happy with what I seen, and I'm really grateful that we got the win. Brings me to my next question. You know we can we can talk about the Chiefs immediately, but I'm kind of gonna hold that off. 
what's your guys' thoughts on me and Nate was talking before we did it live and we was talking about he was um you know talking about um Evan Ingram and the trade rumors. Um you guys can answer this, whoever wants to go first. Um would you trade Evan Ingram and what do you think? Fuck you yes! Oh, oh, fuck yeah. right, so no, 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 no. Trade that motherfucker for a bag of Funyuns and a Coke. I don't think you could get that much for him, but just try. Maybe butter. Like a smaller yeah, bag of Funyuns, do, though. But just... But, yeah, okay. but maybe, you can't but, even get a Funyun to the but I think with Evan Ingram, he has shown that he's one of the worst trap picks. If you wouldn't understand what we say about the worst draft pick, the dude is just terrible. Like he can't catch. He can't he could run, but he's not he's not someone now who can just make explosive plays when he get when he gets the ball, he's explosive as a tight end. But now he's just looking more slower. Like the guy just he's a decline player, man, and he's definitely not the player that I expect him. After his first season, I he had a good season, then the next year he just sucked. So after that, I just knew this guy wouldn't be a good draft pick. Yeah, the other thing, some Cardinals fan on Twitter wanted it. I'm like, you do realize he sucked. He's like, he only sucks because he's on the Giants. I'm like, okay, you know what? Go fuck yourself. Eat a dick. Yeah, he traded. He traded for the. They just traded for tra- uh, Hertz. Kelsey. Travis Hertz, Kelsey. Kelsey. Not Kelsey. Sorry, Hurts. My bad. <laughs> I meant Hurts. I was thinking Kelsey. Um, because Evan Ingram was supposed to be not Kelsey, but almost to that level. Would you say kind of in a way? Yeah. His he's, his value he's of coming the, out of the draft as a receiving type of. He was yeah. Kelsey receiving, not Kelsey with the ball. Exactly. Kelsey's all around tight end. When exactly. He, when he looked at Evan Ingram, they're like, the guy can improve blocking. Which like is a Darren bad. Waller almost. Darren, but Darren Waller is a good block. That's the difference. I think. Yeah, Evan Ingram can't block. He's just a receiving tight end. He can't block. Yeah. He definitely can't block. Evan Ingram he, couldn't block my chihuahua. Would you want to say this? He's a receiver playing tight end. Yes, he is. Yeah, absolutely. He, that's, that's, that's what I'm going to say. He's he's not. He's a, Listen, Evan Ingram's. I like his excitement, but he just sucks. Like, he can't use it. Yeah, I, what I think it is, too, is, like, um, I think he sucks if he's the prime target. But if he goes out there as, like, the third read, uh, not the prime target, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's he not sucks. the center <laughs> of attention. We've seen, we've seen Evan Ingram make plays that is awesome, right? And I was kind of I was kind of going to relate it to Daniel Jones. Now – don't don't take this take this oh. how you want to take it, but don't take this. Don't roast me for this. If you look at Daniel Jones, he has his ups, he has his downs. If you look at Evan Ingram, he has his cancel. ups, he has his downs. Zion's cancel. Dan- 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 <laughs> don't cancel me. Cancel Daniel Jones culture. proved this season that he clearly is a franchise quarterback, and I clearly want him to be the franchise quarterback. Evan Ingram has yet to have a season like that. So even though he had ups and downs. Those games where he's like, oh, he's making every catch. And then those games, if you catch that ball, we'll, we'll damn near in the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it have to be if the value's right. You, you know, know what lost me? I wouldn't I'm... trade the name one for a seventh round pick. Well, we're, all we're going to get is a fifth round pick. Yeah, we're going to get a fifth. We're going to get a fifth. If you can get a fifth, maybe, you know. But I just say it, it benefits us just to even keep him. Even though we're not targeting him, people still have to block him. And that's the that's the thing. If you can just keep him out there to distract, that's the we don't even have to throw the ball. But think about it. If 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 everybody's healthy, St- uh, uh, Shepard's back in the slot. You know, Tony Galladay. But I do. This Courtney. is what I have to say about that though. I like the tight ends that we have. Oh yeah, Caden Smith. Caden Smith is taking away from two needs opportunities. Oh, you say that I, Evan Ingram is taking it away from Caden Smith. Yes. Taking away. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Him. So, imagine this, guys. Kyle Rudolph and Katie Snip next to each other on the blocking game. That's like Wait, two- Kyle Rudolph I want to get rid of Mother Never Ingram at this point. I know oh, I you he, he, his thing Kyle though. Rudolph thing ain't though. terrible, bro. He's he ain't he's, terrible, but he's but, not the guy. We we're so used to receiving tight ends. We're not used to blocking tight ends. Mm-hmm. When a blocking I tight think- end starts, he's he's not supposed to be a guy who's gonna make explosive plays. No, he's gonna be a guy who just doesn't he has no route running skills. He just makes good catches when he needs it to and catches the goddamn ball, which is what Evan oh, yeah, can't goddamn do. Absolutely. But here's my thing with Kyle Rudolph. I want to see you pick up your players. I want to yeah. see you put your yeah, hand out there and pick up your players. You know listen, bro, if he can back it on the field, which he did last week, if he can back it up, I'm fine. I'm good. Like the guy, the guy has, he just, I think what him is mostly is just. He's old. Yeah, that's, we signed an old tight end. <laughs> we, we, signed, a, we signed, we signed my grandpa, bro. <laughs> 
Listen, he's not the fastest guy, but he can do the job. Like he can do the job, John, for a season at least. Absolutely. Let's get it. Ridge uh, brings me to my next question. Now this had came up on multiple streams a, a bunch of times. Um, what is you guys' thoughts on James Bradbury and his concept contract situation? Should we um, should we keep him or should we trade him? Or should we get rid of him at the end of the season? What would you guys do? Nate, you can answer first. Which player? Uh, James Bradbury. Oh, Bradbury. Um, yes. no. No, I want you want to keep him. I will keep. I will keep Bradbury with the Steve Betts. I. Will, I. This guy is just, you're his, guys. You already has three picks on the season. That's three. He's, yeah, he's he gonna, would. He would have had nine if he could. Yes, catch. exactly that. But he, this is the good thing, though. He got locked down the side of the field. You know, you know what that Bradbury, he got locked down the side. So. He got torched by CeeDee Lamb on the side of the field. CeeDee Lamb is good, bro. Don't see what CeeDee finish. I James love Bradbury is supposed to be an all-pro. Why is he not playing like it? He, he, dude, he plays in zone defense. <laughs> I don't care what kind of defense you're playing. If you're an all-pro player, and when, you give, when we give you that big of a contract, you better play like it. When... And this is – I'm going to say that to Logan, though. If you look at what he did, though, he basically locked him down until the safeties can't move the hell over because they're goddamn slow. Our safeties can't cover shit, bro. This is why I hate zone defense we have no – our safeties are slow as shit. It's – that's the biggest problem. McKinney. McKinney is the only one playing with fast, But when you put your bro Peppers and Logan Ryan out there – Bro, that's a dinosaur and just a bat. Oh, Bob, yeah. guys, Jabril is done for the season, my guy. Yeah, that's, oh, that's damn. yeah. But now we have Logan Ryan, who I I think that's we we overpaid that guy. But Thirty million dollars for a fucking dinosaur fossil. He's a Listen, good leader. I love what he brings, he brings, he brings yeah, to the team. I like his sport. Yeah. I like it. I I think he deserves a captain because he's he's basically the only guy on the defense that is just he has the hype mentality and he for he, he even said I recruit players. That's what he does. He recruits players. And now we have absolutely. But one thing I want to say is the secondary, please be the consistent, bro. This is the one game that I saw you guys actually communicating in the secondary. My so earphones please, design. Please. I'm gonna change it out, but you guys can hold it down. Okay. Um, Logan, Logan's your turn, so you can go over. Yeah, I would. Uh, I'd keep James Bradbury, but I try to restructure, restructure his contract so he's not making that much money. Okay. But I think James when this. Well, this is the thing you're going to restructure, though. How much would you give him? What's he making currently? How many got This dude gets restructured, like, every week. Like, the last restructure, October the 2nd. Okay. So, I think it was I think it was because of the salary bonus. Okay. Yeah, ca- yeah just make a cap space. So, his... Yeah, they didn't even say what he even got. They just said restructure. So he just got restructured to a so 1.3. Yeah, we, so we cleared up 1.3. So he's probably making 1.3 less. So yeah, my math sucks. So I can't do that. <laughs> okay, what's 45 million divided by three? See. Okay, so he's making fifteen million dollars a year. I'd uh, I'd put I take that down to about twelve. I uh, I don't. He's not worth fifteen mil in my opinion. He's not playing like it. You want to pay a guy like a pro bowler? He better play like a pro bowler. I don't care what scheme he's playing. If you're getting paid like a pro bowler, play like a pro bowler. And uh, that's facts, bro. I'm I'm actually tired of the way that. Which is which is a great example is Kenny Galladay. We <laughs> overpaid the hell out of him, which you could have got him less. You wouldn't understand. We could have got this guy less. Yes, yeah, Zion. I was just saying. Uh, uh, we James Bradbury is making fifteen million dollars a year, and I think that's too much because if we're paying you like a pro bowler, you better be playing like a pro bowler. And he's not playing like a pro bowler right now. So I said we restructure that. Uh, he should be making, in my opinion, about twelve right now. Which I would be interested in this though. Just make him until he's like thirty one. That's a that's a that's yeah. A, like if uh, for and then sure. just develop not, the younger guys, and then you just let, not, and then when the younger guys are good, just put those guys out there. So 
And we'll yeah, probably have a Dory. Right? We're ain't getting yeah, out of that Dory contract. Yeah, we're not we're not gonna get out of that Dory contract. But most definitely, if we don't get rid of uh, Bradbury, most definitely restructure, uh, and that'll probably be the best bet in that. Yeah. Um, sorry about that, guys. And I thank you Good. so much for holding it down. Um, hell yeah! Brings me to my next question. Um, what is your thoughts on going forward? You know, against the Chiefs. Um, do you guys, do you guys think we have a chance? And if if you if you guys think we do have a chance, what would you what would the method of victory be? You uh, guys can uh, take it. Are you wherever, can, in can whatever I, order? My bad. Can I go first? No. All right. So. Oh. Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. How can we beat this team? I think we have about a 45% chance of winning. Their defense, uh, they have a very – they're a finesse team, right? So if you want to beat them, you got to play tough and you got to play hard and you got to hit as hard as you possibly can. we got to go in there with that Super Bowl 25 game plan. It's uh, Bill Belichick's game plan from that ga- from Super Bowl 25 where we defeated the Bills is in the Hall – is in Canton, Ohio in the Hall of Fame. So what I mean by that is run the ball – Keep Patrick Mahomes off the field for as long as possible. You got to sustain 10 plus play drives because if you turn it into five play drive, five play drive, five play drive, you're not going to, you can't keep pace with the Chiefs. So, what you got to do, you got to, you got to keep your offense on the field. You got to be able to run the ball. That's why the Giants are really trying to get Barkley back this week because I don't know if you guys realize, but Barkley is back at practice today. Yeah. We're really trying to get him. And this is a game where you got to get every single running back involved, not just Booker and Barkley. I want Brightwell and Penny nice. in there too. And then on defense, uh, what I would do here, this sounds kind of dumb, but it worked for us in Super Bowl 25. I'd let the Chiefs establish a ground game. And by let them, I mean literally let them establish a ground game. Because if you stop the ground game, they're going to have to go to Patrick Mahomes. And we know what happens when Patrick Mahomes takes over. It's, it, it gets ugly for a defense real quick. So let them establish a ground game uh, because you don't want Patrick Mahomes. If you're if you're going to let them be – if they're going to beat you, let them beat you on the ground. Don't let Patrick Mahomes beat you. And then for Travis Kelsey, I'm going to add on to what Big Pat said. Uh, Travis Kelsey does not do good when he's getting hit. All you got to do is pop him a few times, and he's off. He can't run his routes because Pat, Travis Kelsey, I'm not calling him a pussy, but he's a bit of a pussy. Um, <laughs> and, then for, and then for Tyree Kill, uh, this is oh, – there's not – I mean, it, Ty- Tyreek Hill's a ticking time bomb. He's eventually going to get you, but make him stay underneath. What I do, I play 220 Tampa on Tyreek Hill, which basically means you're playing cover two zone around yes. a, spe- a, spe- a specific re- – a specific, specific receiver, yes. In this case, it's Tyree Kill. So what I do, uh, I know people say a Dory because of the speed, but I don't know. Tyree Kill's a finesse guy. So honestly, whenever Tyree Kill goes up against physical big corners like James Bradbury, he looks flustered. So I'd honestly, Aaron Robinson's going to be back. I say you play, you you double team him with Bradbury and Robinson and try to keep him underneath. And then you can have a safety play deep just in case he gets past that double coverage. That is the game plan for how to beat the Chiefs. And before you go, Nate, who wins this game? The Giants. Well, what was, your, what was your score prediction? Twenty-eight, <laughs> twenty-four. I Ooh. love it. I sign me up. Sign me up. You said if the we, the if we do play. that, if we do that game plan to the fucking we team, gotta, we got to yeah execute on defense every single down. Yep. So basically, let the Chiefs establish a ground game. Let them beat you on. Let them beat you on the ground. Don't let Patrick Mahomes beat you because if you let Patrick Mahomes beat you, it's a wrap. Yeah, it's uh. Hit Travis Kelsey. He's a little bit of a pussy. Um, play 220 Tampa or double team Tyree Kill. Establish a ground game and keep the Chiefs' offense off the field. If you do that, sounds easy, huh? That sounds easy, huh? Yeah, it <laughs> yeah, sounds, sounds easy. easy. <laughs> but, but if you do that, if you if you can do that, you have a very you have, a chance. you have a very if you could do every single one of those things perfectly, you have a chance. You have a high chance of winning this game. If you mess up on any one of those. Your winning percentage goes down and down and down. So we gotta we gotta execute. We gotta get to establish a ground game. We gotta let them establish a ground game so Patrick Mahomes can't beat you. And we should win as long as we play good coverage against Pepper. Uh, not Peppers against Hill and uh, Kelsey. I love it, Nate. Uh the cheat the beat the Chiefs. It's in my opinion. It's it actually is pretty simple if you look at my standards. One last thing: get pressure. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Get the front. The front four has to get going. And I better not seeing some goddamn three four. 
I would hate because this is why I'm going to say that. And three, four, it's basically just trusting on your cornerbacks, which we know right now. If you guys give you, if you guys were honest, we don't trust our cornerbacks right now. So it's honestly, in my opinion, you go with the four three. You let your edge rushers Aziz and Roche get at Patrick Mahomes, and what's with the four? That's what you. That's what you do. You have to let your line, your trenches beat the other trenches. So, and then you know the Chiefs' offensive line ain't good. That offensive line sucks. Like every time I see that offensive line, it, they Patrick Mahomes always gets out there, and that he always gets pressure. So that's that thing. And then covering Hill and Kelsey, those guys. It's we're in, we, we know we ain't gonna stop Kelsey. Kelsey's like that. We, we always Yo, we can't. Like, I'm yeah. telling you, Nate. If we hit or if very early in the game, I'm saying first quarter is so you gotta punish. And when I say punish, this is a game where you literally have to punish the shit out of the Chiefs receivers and tight ends. Because if you hit Kelsey, I don't know if you were watching uh, during Super Bowl Fifty Five Bucks Chiefs. They were hitting Kelsey a ton, and after they did that, he never got going. Yeah, but I I would just say this though. It's it's really hard stopping Tyree Kill because he's he's literally a gadget receiver. He's, he's a ticking time bomb. He's if I've seen some plays where Mahomes puts this guy running back. It's some weird. Yeah. It's gonna be hard covering him. But, Super dynamic, man. But everything else, it's he's a Tyree much, Kill. Tyree Kill is a uh, Tony Sillin. Yeah, but much yeah. faster. <laughs> yeah, yeah, much much faster. But so like the fact that we're going against what Tony like. I don't, I don't, I hate doing this because, you know, anything can happen. But at the end of the day, we're going against, <clears throat> yeah, Tyreek Hill, enough said. I don't even need to explain it. Continue, yeah. sorry. Yeah. But uh, always I want to say on the, and then on the, are we going to do offense too? Oh, I just, I, I really just asked you, uh, to be honest, I just wanted to know uh, if you, if you had a spin in this game, how, uh, um, how's the method of victory, which you answered, awesome. And who do you have in, in this game? I'm gonna go with the Giants, and you can you can talk about the offense if you want to. Yeah, I I'll just say Giants, and I'll I'll say I actually think we could win 31-21. 31 21. 31. Look at right now, look at right now, 10? bro. Look at right now, bro. Did I'm gonna go spread on this. Nate, 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 listen, Nate, bro. Nate, Nate, listen, Nate, my Nate. reason. Listen, my reason. Mahomes is gonna do one of his stupid interceptions. Monday Night and, Football. The Giants suck at Monday Night Football. I don't care. We're gonna break the narrative right now, bro. Well, minus ten. I don't know if you guys realize. You know the Chiefs. Um, the Chiefs are minus ten. Sorry. You know Chiefs when the, are minus ten. You know um, when the Chiefs uh, offense enters the field, they get really loud. The fans get really loud into that. Oh, that fucking mm-hmm. chant thing. Playing them at home. Mm-hmm. Then just throw yeah. random football at them. Shut up. Yeah. The, no, the Giants have been listening to that on loudspeakers in practice to get used to it. How have they been doing that little, with the stupid it. Joe Judge like talker thing? How have they been doing that for like, the last like year? The stupid yeah. talker thing. The thing is so annoying. And Pride has been hearing, oh my God, with the clips and Pride has with them doing that. It's so annoying. Um, speaking of other team stadiums, and I just thought of this when you guys are when you guys are talking about it. I'm sorry. Um, I'm gonna uh intro intro intro. So I I don't know why it took me that that weird to get it out, but it's gonna be an NFL topic, not really Giants related. Um, Tom Brady's 600 touchdown pass. Uh. Gave to a fan by Mike Evans. Did you guys hear about that? Yeah. And then you guys heard about the Tampa going and making negotiations and giving okay, that fan bro. the ball. Okay, bro. Okay, We know you're the dollars. we know you're the Mike Evans simp, bro. We know no, 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 no. It's nothing to do with Mike Evans. Like, on Mike Evans, but, bro. Oh, but we can get into Mike Evans after this. But here's the thing. Did you? They, they uh, ended up made a negotiation. They gave this this gave this fan. They took back Tom Brady's 600 touchdown ball they gave this fan another game day ball a thousand dollar gift card to the game day stir they also gave him a, a set date where he's going to meet tom brady and probably get a bunch of shit and hang out with tom brady so what's your guys thoughts of that uh, as a fan of the game um would have you would you give back that ball fuck no no <laughs> no why would i give back that ball sell that shit on ebay i can get way more yeah, than a thousand dollars whatever whatever the guy said was like uh Whoever values these things was saying that it was a five hundred thousand dollar ball. Are, are you, bro? Tom Brady can own the but whole about, NFL football as, as, as a fan base. As a fan base, I don't Wouldn't care. You feel like it? I, I, I would give do. it back. Why are the Bucks fan feel. base right now? I I live in Tampa, but, so I know what they feel. They I talked to some of them about it. They're like, we don't care. 
it's not important. Like, why that? They got so but bored. You, you wouldn't going, give back that ball. He, you know, I just was back. like, bro, I need I, this I'll ball back, right now, dude. bro. My kids. Think about it. Think about it. Like, down. That's Tom. That's maybe Evan Rodgers, but maybe. <clears throat> maybe Patrick Mahomes, maybe. But 600 touchdowns. He wants that on his shelf. He's going to sell so it. He's selling right. it. It he's must gonna, not he's, matter that much to you him. Understand, he's bro, who's Tom, selling it? The seller, Tom man. Brady. Tom Brady's not selling it. Yes, he is. It's on the no, you don't, no, you don't understand, bro. The man has been selling all of his stuff. He does it for charity. <laughs> oh, if he sells it for charity, then he does you go. Dude, he has his own thing. He just sells it. He does the TB12 how to make out with your children thing. Oh, my God. Got you, got you. And then we can end this stream. We have five minutes left. We're going to end the stream um, looking up. The receiving yards for who? Oh, uh, for my man, Mike Evans. Your oh. man, <laughs> because I was getting so much hate when I put Mike Evans as my top three receiver. Oh, let's go 496 yards for Mike Evans. Yeah, 496 yards, and I believe that's on 37 receptions. Jamar Chase has more as a rookie. Oh, 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 obviously, obviously, but when you know it's not, it's not too crazy now when you look at Mike Evans competing, obviously, and and I get it, you know. Um, he has Tom Brady throwing him the ball, but I'm gonna keep on saying this: Mike Evans is is one of the elite receivers in the league, and he deserves my credit, and he's the most underrated elite receiver. In the I league. put him in the top five. And <laughs> he gets his credit. He gets his credit, but once again. He's proving that he's probably gonna have his eighth straight season. I'll put with, Darius Slayton above him with over uh, with <laughs> over a thousand yards. And shout out to Chase because Chase is about to be, break records. Chase, if he continues on the path that he continues on, he's about to shatter records. I was about to say, can shout I, out to Jamar Chase. Let's go LSU. Randy I, Moss said, watching Jamar Chase, he's in awe. Can't mm, I love can, it? That's from, that's from that's one of the goats right there, in can, Randy Moss. Can I just apologize to Logan about about Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow? I apologize, bro. On all my, I apologize for the Joe Burrow hate, bro. I I apologize. That dude is a oh, monster. You, that connection that was special that year in LSU, and that's why the Bengals passed up on Pennzoil, just for that reason. Logan, being an LSU, LSU fan, he can tell you that um, that was something special when you have a quarterback like Joe Burrow come out. And did what he did, and still the still the pick, still the number one draft pick, and do it with a receiver that was like, I know I'm confident in my receiving skill set, so I can take the year off and just make my body rest and come out and show up. And LSU connection is real, man, and they're proving it right. And thank God for that defense, you know, buying in to that culture and and performing. Thank you, the Bengals. I'm I I have a hot. I always been a. I, I think the Bengals after the first game, I was been the big I would have been a believer of them after the week one game. Pittsburgh and, is gonna have a top ten pick this year and they're gonna take a quarterback. Who? Pittsburgh. Oh yeah. Top, ben Roethlisberger is washed. Um Ben Roethlisberger is washed ass juice. <laughs> Hell yeah. So I wanna thank both of you guys for coming on today. 30 minute sessions. Nate the Cox kids are Sports these and days. Logan Giant Zone. So basically, Nate, plug your final plugs, and we can get out of here after Logan plugs his. So let's get. All right, one, two, we're almost to two hundred. We're almost to two hundred subs. Um, just get me there so we can let's get so it. we can get almost to that con- that community tab. Which if we get that, that's amazing. But because I hate using Twitter, so please get me there. So I don't need to use Twitter. And yeah, two hundred. We're on the way to go. So let's go. Nice. All right. You guys can find me at Logan's Giant Zone and Logan underscore Sport Boy on Twitter. Um, I make Giants content as much as I can. Nick's content. Uh, we're on the road to 1,000. I'm at 950 right now. Uh, so let's get it. Let's get it. And thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> we'll check out both of their channels. I'm at 123. Um, but you know, both of the channels are gonna be linked down below along with reconnected. And Nate just had um, a heart attack. Look at his face. For the next for the next show, I'm gonna um gonna um maybe we talk to Miz, we talk to Jewel, um, talk to Big Cat, talk. um try to get Coach them on Shep. 30 minutes of sessions and uh eventually, you know, who knows what we might have on here. So thank you guys for watching and you guys have a good day. Let's get Peace, it. Giants guys. life. Let's go, Nick. Let's go, Giants.